Welcome everybody. My name is Michael Dinney and this is a one hour Hatha yoga practice that will include some really um, accessible, effective movements. A lot of emphasis on relaxation, so we'll do a long Shavasana at the end of practice. And as always, lots of emphasis on relaxing while you're doing it. Uh, so we'll start off in a sitting position because I don't have any other choice. <laughs> Make yourself comfortable. You can rest your hands over your lap. And I'll be joined by my little buddy Lenny today. He's got a bit of a cold, so he'll be uh, mellowing out in the background. So you can rest your hands on your knees. Close your eyes. And start to notice your breath. Breathing through the nose. And then make your exhale a little bit longer. Following the breath all the way out. Then relax the belly and let your inhale take care of itself. As you exhale, you can explore contracting the abdominals. That's going to help uh, push the air out. And then try to relax the belly for the most part as you breathe in. A little bit of engagement could be helpful. And take a few more slow breaths. And we can add a layer onto the breathing, which is called ujjayi breathing, making a really soft ocean-like sound in the back of the throat. So if you're new to that technique, it feels a little bit like uh, the feeling of a whisper. A whisper. Uh, but it's even more gentle than that. And what this does is it partially closes the back of the throat, allowing the air to move in really slowly. It's easiest to find it on an exhale. If you imagine fogging up a glass, and then do that again, but close your mouth as you exhale. So it probably took a pretty long time to empty the breath, and that's the idea. And then we can recreate that feeling on the inhale by imagining having a smoothie through a straw. Doing it with the mouth open will dry out your mouth really quickly, so we do it with the mouth closed the whole time instead. So next time you do it, you can start through the mouth, and about halfway through, close it, and you'll find that same kind of sound happening from the back of the throat. And then find the sound on the exhale all the way through. And then try to slow the breath down about five seconds in. Short pause at the top and five seconds out. Slow inhale. And slow exhale. And then stay with your slow breath. We'll start to make some movements with the spine. So you can lean over one knee, lean back a little bit, and then lean over to the other leg. Big circular movements. And the circles could be as big or as small as you're able to. I can't demonstrate my full range of motion because of Lenny, but you might be able to get a little more movement than me. And feel free to close your eyes. When we take one of the senses away, the other ones become a little more heightened. In this case, it's the, the sense of feeling, feeling the breath. Feeling it not just through the nose, but also uh, feeling it radiate out from the stomach area or the heart area with each inhale. And you're welcome to change directions at any time.
Good. And then we'll come back to center, resting your hands over your knees. As you inhale, pull back, draw your shoulder blades closer, lift your chest as much as you can. And then exhale, take your shoulders forward, spreading the shoulder blades around your back. Inhale, pull with the hands, shoulder blades closer. Open your chest. And then exhale, round the back, drop the tailbone, shoulders forward. Inhale, roll up through your spine, drawing the shoulder blades closer. Option to lift the chin at the end. And exhale to round the back, dropping the chin in. Relax the jaw completely. And do a few more of these movements. Going from a little bit of a back bend or spinal extension to a little bit of forward bend, also known as spinal flexion. Good. Last one. And with an inhale, lift your heart. Take your right hand across to the other knee. And with an exhale, twist, taking the left hand to the floor behind you. Look over the left shoulder. Take a few breaths there. Think of pushing your right shoulder forward, spreading the right shoulder blade out. Meanwhile, the left shoulder blade can squeeze in towards the middle of the back helping to turn the left chest open. Inhale, come back to center. Exhale, take the left hand across to the right knee and right fingertips behind you, rolling that right shoulder up and back. Take the left shoulder forward, spreading the shoulder blade out. You okay there, little buddy? He's okay. And the theme of this class is uh, yoga for pugs and for babies of all sorts. Just kidding. We'll actually be working more with uh, tight hips, working with the hip flexors especially. For those of us who have been uh, accustomed to sitting quite a bit with all these Zoom meetings, I think you'll get a lot out of this. Even if you don't, just being human, our hips tend to get really tight. And then inhale back to center. And then we'll move into table position. So if you have your yoga blocks, you can place one on each side of your mat. If you have a pug, you can kindly lift it up and give it a different resting place. I'm going to put them on this little ploof we have over here. There you go, buddy. You can just relax there. <laughs> and then move into table position. So fingers are spreading wide. If this is uncomfortable for your knees, you might take the middle of your mat and fold it over, creating a triple padded area to put your knees on. And then hands on the floor underneath your shoulders. With an exhale, round your spine, sit back towards the heels. On an inhale, come forwards, keeping the arms straight, shoulders over the wrist. Exhale, sit back towards the heels. And we'll keep exploring this seemingly simple movement. So try to keep your spine rounded the whole time, spinal flexion, spreading the shoulder blades. And then with each repetition, you might explore bringing the hands a little bit further forward. And then what that does is it gives you the opportunity to engage the abdomen as it lengthens as you come forward. And then to work more and more with your overhead range of motion in the shoulders as you sit back. Once you find a sweet spot, keep working with it. We'll do this about five more times. Inhale to come forward, fingers spreading, all the knuckles root through the upper palm. And on the exhale, push through your hands, sitting back. Inhale coming forwards, strong in the abdomen. Exhale, use the core to sit back. A few more to go at your own pace. Hey, buddy. <laughs> and some people call this pose the puppy dog. Some call it the heart opening pose. I'm going to roll with puppy dog today since that's my reality. <laughs> so next exhale, we'll sit back, drop the tailbone around your spine, 
and then bow your head towards the floor. <laughs> Try to keep the arms straight. If you'd like to relax more in the pose, you're welcome to rest your forearms on the ground instead. And then focus in on your breathing. <laughs> Noticing the sound of your breath. You can make that soft ocean sound to um, sort of distort any other sounds. So the focal point is all on the breathing. Good. One more breath. And then very slowly come on up. Sit back onto your heels if that's comfortable for your knees to be fully flexed. If that's too much, you can come into camel pose instead with your pelvis over your knees. Push the bases of your toes down into the ground. And you can play with sitting back as much as you're comfortable. Bring the backs of the hands into each other and make some circles with the wrist joints. And then we'll come back to table position. Taking the hands underneath the shoulders, bring the big toes to touch, keep the knees wide apart. Big toes touching. With an inhale breath, reach your right arm out to the side, opening the chest. On the exhale, touch the right hand back to the floor. Again, inhale, right arm up, opening your chest. Exhale, touching the floor. Option two is thread the needle reaching your right arm underneath your left arm. Continue exploring at your own pace. Inhale, reaches up. Exhale, hand to the floor under your shoulder or reach underneath the left arm. Your choice. Continuing to move with your breath. Mobilizing the upper spine, especially on the inhale movement as the arm reaches up. Good, last one. Inhale to reach up. Then we'll hold this pose, turning the right chest open. Reach your hand back by your hip, and then reach forwards next to your ear. Big circular movements with that right shoulder. The more the hips go back towards the feet, the easier it'll be for the bottom arm. Uh, conversely, the more your torso goes forward, the more it's gonna be weight-bearing for the left arm. So you can play with the weight transfer. All the while, keep drawing your left shoulder away from your ear. One more breath. And on an exhale, take the right hand down under the shoulder. Other side, inhale, left arm up, opening the chest. Exhale, touch the fingers down, or keep going, threading the needle. Inhale, left arm up, opening the chest. And exhale, continue moving through the transitions at your own pace. Feel free to close your eyes. And remember, the more you're forward over that right hand, the harder it'll be in terms of the weight-bearing aspect. So gauge it in towards how you're feeling in the moment. And next, inhale. Reach the left arm up, and then make big circles in that left shoulder, reaching back by the hip, forwards by the ear. Big circular movements. Feel free to come more forward over your shoulder for more of a challenge. Strong in the right side of the core. And then next exhale, we'll take the left hand down. And then come into table position again. Pushing into your left hand, we'll keep the legs parallel this time. Now bring your left leg straight back, right arm straight ahead, bird dog. Exhale, elbow towards knee. Inhale, straight ahead, straight back. And exhale, elbow to knee. And continue, a few more variations like that.
and then come back to table and switch. Spreading right fingers, push through all the knuckles of the upper palm, and then bring the right leg straight back, left arm straight ahead on the inhale. Exhale, elbow knee. Inhale, straight arm, straight leg, and exhale, elbow knee. A few more to go at your own pace. Notice if it's quite different from left side to right side. The human body is inherently asymmetrical. It's natural that things will be totally different on one side compared to the other. And then come back to the center. Good. So, next one. Take the left hand down. Right arm out to the side like a cactus branch. Left leg out to the side. So the knee and elbow are both bent about 90 degrees. Exhale, elbow knee. Inhale, out to the sides, abduction. Exhale, elbow knee. Three more to go. Try to limit any other movement in the body. Just moving from the hip and the shoulder of the right arm. And then out to the sides, hold the pose for three breaths, engaging the buttocks, strong in the core. And relax down. Other side. Inhale, left arm out, right leg out. Exhale, elbow knee, as far as your animal will allow you. And continue five times. And then hold for three breath, arm out, leg out, activating the buttock and the core. And then exhale, come back to the center. Very good. From there, we'll go on to the forearms, laying all the way down onto your belly. Come into Sphinx Pose, bringing the elbows a little bit forward of your shoulders. So. If you're feeling any discomfort in your lower back in this position, you can reduce the angle of the back bend by walking the hands further forward. Find what feels good. And then focus on your breathing. As you relax the belly, see if you can expand your belly against the floor on each inhale. And then follow the exhales all the way out. And slow inhale, the belly expands against the floor, and this can cause uh, more movement in the rib cage. And slow exhale. So you might be feeling a nice abdominal massage as you're breathing here. It will take about five more slow breaths. Your legs could be relaxed, or you can experiment with lifting the shins and feet off the floor to help awaken the muscles in the back of the legs. The hamstrings have the role of both bending the knee and also pressing the hips to the floor, hip extension. And then next exhale, lower your head down and then bring your hands back to where your elbows were. Transitioning into a cobra pose now, come onto the tips of your fingers, lift the palms and then with an inhale, lift your shoulders away from the floor. Try lifting the knees off the ground. Exhale, down slow. Gentle effort is enough. Inhale, lift the shoulders and legs. Engage the upper back. Exhale, down. See more to go. Inhale, strong in the upper back. Exhale, down. If you feel any back pain, lift your arms fully away from the floor. Elbows bent about 90 degrees. This way, instead of pushing, you're activating the upper back muscles, which relate to pulling. And then last one, lift everything up, and exhale down. From there, we'll take the left arm out to the side, keeping the elbow bent about 90 degrees. Feel free to bring that whole arm even further out to the left. And then as you gently push the palm into the floor, squeeze the left shoulder blade to the middle of your back, as you roll over onto your left side. You might also bring that right foot behind you, bending the knee. Hey, Lenny. Using the muscles of the right buttock to help steer your whole body towards the right. Head could be on or off the floor. It can also be nice to support the head with a yoga block. 
about five more slow breath. Notice the feeling of your breath. Still imagine the inhale radiating out from the abdomen, but then see if you can draw that same breath all the way up to the chest. Breathing into the stretch. Two more breaths. And then come back to the center. We'll switch sides. Take the right arm out to the side, bending the elbow about 90 degrees. Left hand under your shoulder. And then go ahead and roll over onto your right side. So maybe you're taking the left leg behind you, helping to steer the hips open towards the sky. Stretching into the right chest. Head could be on or off the floor, or use a block if you're raising the head. And breathe. Then come back to the center, interlace your fingers behind the back, drawing the shoulder blades a little bit closer together. Try to lift your shoulder heads away from the ground. Squeeze your legs together, and then with an inhale, pull through the arms, lifting the chest, squeeze the shoulder blades. We'll take five breath here. Try lifting the legs off the floor, strengthening the entire back line, the back of the thighs, the glutes, Space between the shoulder blades. Two more breaths. And exhale all the way down. Hands by your chest or ribs. Cobra pose. Inhale to pull with your arms. Exhale, push into your hands using the core. And we'll sit back into puppy stretch. Taking the hands forward and sit back towards the heels. Feel free to experiment. This pose is best done with a puppy near your face for full benefit. I find it interesting that this pose is also called a heart opening pose. Coincidence? I think not. And then very slowly lift your head. So you can come into table position with the shoulders over the hands. I recommend you place yoga blocks um, a little bit behind your hands, just outside of your hips. So you're welcome to stay in table. Option two is pressing up to downward facing dog. So if that feels like too much, you can bring your knees back down instead. In your down dog, keep your knees bent a little bit. Lift your heels and push your hips away from your hands. And then engaging the core, take a long exhalation to really connect with the abs. Keep that energy on the inhale. Lift your right leg up. Exhale, step the right foot just outside of the hand, lifting the palm to make space. And then we'll bring the left knee to the floor. You can take your yoga blocks onto their highest height. Feel free to slide the right foot further forward or move the left knee further back, same thing. And then inhale, bend the front knee to a lunge. Exhale, sit towards the back heel and attempt to straighten the right leg. Inhale, bend the front knee. And then exhale, move the hips back, try to straighten the front leg. And continue. You can go as far forward as you're comfortable and sit as far back as you're comfortable. Inhaling to bend the front knee and exhaling to move the hips back. Try to straighten the front leg. 
Last one. Inhale, bend the front knee. And then pause there. So on your exhale, try engaging your core, looking at your belly button. And we'll take five breaths there. You can also point your left foot, pressing the top of the foot down, and then imagine dragging that left hip forward while pulling the right hip back and continuing to look at the belly button. If you'd like an extra challenge, use the blocks for balance and try to lift your left knee off the ground. Really strong in the core. This can get into stretching the front of the left hip. But we'll do that in a variety of different ways so you find at least one stretch that works really well for you. And then lowering the knee, tuck your left toes under like a toe squat. Take a breath in to lift the heart. Exhale, straighten your front leg, and then bow over that leg. And we'll hang out there for about five deep breaths. The blocks can stay as they were, or you can slide them further forward as an option if there's more space to explore. Long, deep breath. Try flexing your right toes towards your shin, stretching into the back of the calf. If this hurts your spine, better to keep the heart lifted and then from a straight spine, approach straightening the leg. It doesn't have to be straight. If you need to bend the knee to get comfortable, that's fine as well. Good. And then bend your front knee, and we'll walk the legs back to table position or downward dog. Your choice. Feel free to make any little movements. You can wag the tail side to side. This could be done in table or down dog. And then exhale to connect with the core, drawing the abs in. Inhale to lift the left leg, bending the knee. Exhale, step the left foot just outside of your left hand. Take the blocks to their highest height and try wiggling the left foot forward a little more. And I meant to mention it earlier, if this is uncomfortable for your right knee, try putting a cushion underneath your knee. And then we'll explore the movements. Inhale to the lunge, bending the front knee to your own comfortable degree. Exhale, move the hips back, try to straighten the front leg. Again, inhale, bending the knee. And exhale, Lean back, try to straighten the left leg. And continue a few more of these movements at your own pace. Really helps to have the feet about hip width apart or wider to work with the balance. And the last movement, straightening the leg. Inhale back to the lunging position, and then try pointing the right foot, pushing the top of the foot into the floor. Draw back through your left hip, press forward through your right hip, engaging the core and the buttocks. And then try looking at your belly button. It's a great place to stay. Option two is picking up the back knee for a few breaths. Engage your core, drag the right hip forward. Two more breath. And then lowering the knee, we'll move the hips back, straighten the front leg as much as you can comfortably, flexing left toes to shin, strong in the front of the thigh. Take an inhale to lift the heart, and then exhale, start to fold over that leg to your own comfortable degree. About five slow breaths. And then inhale to bend your front knee again. Exhale, move the legs back to table or to downward dog, your choice. 
This time we'll lift the right leg from either position and pause there for a few breaths, making big circles with the right hip joint. Try to keep the rest of the body still. Consciously you can track the buttocks and that might help you with the range of motion. Now on your next exhale, step the right foot outside the hand again. Use your yoga blocks. Walk that right foot a little bit further forward. Good. Now this time we'll bring the right knee just over the ankle and then spread the arms out to the sides like wings. Take a breath in, bend your front knee as much as you're comfortable. Now as you exhale, reverse the bend of the knee, engage your core and press your forearms together. Inhale, bend the knee, open the arms up. Exhale, reverse the movement, forearms together. A few more rounds to go. Inhale, maybe it's just a little more bend of the knee. Doesn't have to be much of a movement. Exhale, reverse the bend, engaging the buttocks. And again, inhale, opening up. Exhale, forearms together. And then pause there and bring the left arm up to the sky. So you have options. You can take your right hand down to a yoga block and then lean over to the right. If you find your balance is quite good, you're feeling strong in the legs, maybe you take the right hand to the upper arm bone of the left arm, the humerus, and then push back on the humerus. And then just imagine dragging your right hip back and pushing your left hip forward with buttock power. Really getting into the front of that left hip. This is like the opposite of sitting for the left side of your body. One more breath. Good. And then come back to center, straighten the front leg. With an inhale, spread your arms out. On the exhale, twist. Take your left hand down towards the floor under your shoulder or use a yoga block. Right arm up to the sky. We'll take a few breaths in this position. Feel free to make big circles with that top arm, just like we did earlier. Now on your next exhale, take the right hand down to a yoga block or to the floor, and you have options. You could repeat the same forward fold as before, trying to keep the right leg straight. Option two is pointing your left foot you could put a yoga block on the inside of that left ankle. This is called a hero pose or half hero. So you would put your buttocks on the block. The left foot is just uh, outside of the buttock. And you, you can either stay here or if you are really comfortable in that pose and comfortable with knee flexion, option to sit on the floor with all of the left toenails on the ground and then fold over the right leg. Take an inhale to lift the heart, whichever pose you're in. Great place to stay. Option two, exhale to fold forward. Notice how the body tends to roll over to the right. So you could use your right fingers on the floor for support, helping to steer the left buttock back down to the earth. And then inhale, slowly come on up. And then we'll bring the uh, left knee out to the left a little more, about 45 degrees or so. So you can actually sit on the heel. If that's too much, you could try sitting on a yoga block. And then bring your right leg back into a squatting position. Hands to the heart, tall spine. And then lean back just a little bit with core strength, hands together. Allow your right leg to go inwards across the midline and outwards. And the reason that we're doing spinal flexion is to keep the hip joint happy as we explore that inward rotation in deep hip flexion. So feel free to slouch. It's okay to slouch in this one. Sometimes slouching gets a bad rap. Then you learn enough yoga poses, you learn how to embrace slouching at the right moments.
Slow Ching also has that quality of encouraging the back of the diaphragm uh, to expand the most when we inhale. So you might get a sense of breathing into your lower back, an area that's very commonly uh, overextended and compressed. So if you can breathe into it, that's getting it out of that compressed state. Good. And then we'll bring that leg towards the center. Take your right foot a little bit closer to your left leg. And now we'll do a spinal twist, allowing that right leg to drift across the center. Bring your left arm outside of the leg. Maybe it's the hand, maybe it's the upper arm. And then just hang out there, looking over your right shoulder, twisting. Gently press the leg and the arm into each other and breathe. If you know other variations, you could do a half or full bind with the right arm behind the back. Inhale back to center, and then we'll release the pose, taking the hands forward, lift your hips, push into your hands, and we'll meet back in downward dog. If you prefer, you can make your way down to table again. And then we'll do the other side. Starting with lifting the left leg up, bend the knee, and make some big circles in that left hip joint, engaging the buttocks, big circular movements. This could be done in table. On your next exhale, step outside of the left hand, and we'll bring that right knee down to a lunging position. Find the blocks on their highest heights, and it may be really helpful to walk your left foot further forward and then bend the knee again. Find your lunging position. Option to use the blocks, bending the knee and then reversing the bend, engage the buttocks and core. Option two, inhale, open the arms as you bend the knee. Exhale, reverse the bend, forearms together, spinal flexion. Inhale, opening up. Exhale, spinal flexion. So you might find a bit of stretch in the right hip. If you don't, that could be a sign that your knee is too far forward. So you may need to slide your right knee a little bit further back to get the length in the hip flexors. The front of that right hip stretching. We have a few more vinyasas there. These dynamic movements are really good tools to get awareness of where your body is in space and where your sweet spot is in the pose. Everybody has at least one sweet spot, but they're not, all going, they're not going to be the same for all of us. So we'll take the forearms together now, and then bring that right arm up. Left hand can go to the yoga block, and then push into that hand, leaning over to the left. Option two, push your left hand against the humerus of the right arm, and then side bend. So now we're relying more on the strength of the left buttock to support the pose instead of the hand. They're both pretty challenging, though. Imagine the legs were a pair of scissors closing in towards each other. So we're pulling the left hip back, pressing the right hip forward with buttock power. Drawing that stretch up the front of the right hip. Oof, that was hard work. Let's come out of it. Straighten the front leg. Good, and with an inhale, spread the arms. Exhale, twist to the left, take the right hand down, top arm up, stay there, or make big circles with your shoulder again. It's kind of like weightlifting in that your arm is working against the weight of gravity as it moves through its full range of motion. Keep going back to that soft ocean breath. And on your next exhale, you can take the left hand of the yoga block, and then we'll move into the hero variation. So you're welcome to repeat the previous half-legged split, folding over your front leg. Next phase, point the right foot, and place a yoga block inside the right ankle for half hero. If your ankle hurts, it can be helpful to put the pillow um, underneath the ankle for support. Or even using a rolled up towel could be really helpful. Try to keep all the toenails on the floor in these variations. And the third option is sitting on the floor. 
Take an inhale to lift the heart. Exhale, reach for the left shin or the foot, unless of course your hands are on yoga blocks. Again, inhale, chest up, great place to stay. Option two, exhale to fold over the leg, maybe using your left fingers off the side for support. And inhale to lift the heart. Then we'll bring the right knee off to the side about 45 degrees or so. Feel free to sit on a yoga block or sit on your heel. Left leg in a squat. And then explore the range of motion in the left hip. Outward rotation as the knee goes out. Moving towards inward rotation and adduction. Outward rotation. Inward rotation and adduction added across the midline. And continue exploring a few more. If you have the range in your hip, you can even go from the outer edge towards the inner edge as you explore. Working with the feet can give us a lot of information about the hips. And then from a squatting position, bring the foot a little bit closer to the center line. Hands to the heart, slightly lean back, flexing the spine just a little bit, and then bring the squatting leg across the midline, right hand to the knee, or bring the whole arm outside of the leg. And then you can simply support your chin. <laughs> you can think about binding, or you can turn your shoulders in if that's comfortable, taking the hands behind the back. Look over your left shoulder. Create a little bit of resistance, pressing the leg and arm into each other. So that activates the hip abductor muscles. Those muscles play a really big role in uh, hip joint stability and pelvic symmetry. So if you have one leg longer like I do than the other, um, probably your abductors are weaker on one side. And that's cool, that's just the way it is. <laughs> you can work on it a little bit, it'll probably always look that way. But you can manage the pain through regular yoga practice. And then inhale back to center. Exhale, release the pose. And then we'll bring the uh, legs back to down dog or table, last one. Lift your right leg, make circles with the hip. And then engaging your core, take an exhale breath coming forward. Bring your knee to the floor just behind your right hand. And then lean onto the outside of your right thigh. So I have both my knees bent roughly 90 degrees. You can wiggle the left knee back a little bit if that feels comfortable. Wiggle the right ankle forward without using your hands. So both knees are roughly 90. And then we'll take a breath in. And as you exhale, explore hinging from the hip to fold over your shin. Again, inhale, lift the heart. And exhale, hinge forward over your leg. Inhale, come up. Exhale, fold over your leg. Pause at a sweet spot. You can use the hands on the floor. There is the option to uh, support the head on stacked fists or a yoga block if you prefer. Make yourself really comfortable. The main thing is that your right knee is happy. It's more about stretching into the right hip joint as well as the back of that thigh. If you are really flexible, you might approach this pose by pressing the ball of your right foot against your left hand, resist in both directions, keeping the outside of the right thigh on the floor, start to straighten your back leg and gradually rotate it in to a neutral position. 
So you might have your foot a little bit closer to your armpit in that variation. And then inhale to come up. Bend your back knee again, bringing the left knee uh, all the way towards the right heel. Take the right hand to the floor just outside of your right hip. And then with an inhale, lift the left arm and explore lifting the hips, flexing your left toes to your shin. Exhale, slowly sit back and reach back. Inhale, draw a half circle, lifting the arm. And then exhale, sitting back, reach back. And then repeat that a few more times with your breath. You can play with exactly where the right hand is. It's basically like a modified side plank once the hips come up. So there is a weight-bearing component. And then we'll hold this next one, three breath. Lift the hips, reach through the arm. Engage the buttocks, potentially stretching the front of that left hip. On a long exhale, slowly sit back. Bring your hands behind you. Take your feet a little bit wider than the hips, knees wide, and then windshield wiper the legs side to side while supporting yourself on the hands. We'll do that same sequence, turning all the way to the other side of the mat. So I'll see you in a few minutes. <laughs> so you can go onto the outside of your left thigh, bring the shin to the floor, Maybe you're wiggling that right knee back a little further. Maybe you're wiggling the left ankle forward without using the hands. Take an inhale to lift the heart. And bring the hands to the floor now. Exhale, folding over your left shin. Again, inhale, lift the chest. And exhale, explore the fold. Again, inhale, come up. Exhale, fold where you feel comfortable. Make sure the knee's feeling good. And pause at a sweet spot. Feel free to support the head again. If you're really flexible, option to straighten the right leg. And then as we rotate it in, the whole pelvis follows along. So the leg's in a pretty neutral position. But as a result of that movement of the pelvis, the hip will have more external rotation to it. Whichever variation you're in, explore gently pushing the uh, sole of your left foot or the ball of the foot against the right hand gently resisting in both directions, toes spread wide. A few more slow, deep breaths. Inhale to lift the head. And then bring your right knee towards your left foot again. Take the left hand to the floor just outside of your left hip. And with an inhale, reach the right arm by the ear. Lift your hips up, pushing off that left hand. On the exhale, sit back. And continue moving with your breath. Inhale, hips up, strong core and buttocks. And then exhale, lowering the hips down. About three more to go, moving with the breath, lengthening along the right side body. Very similar energy uh, to the lunge variation that we did when we pushed back on the humerus. Really, the, a lot of the same connections are involved here. And then we'll hold for three breaths, lifting the hips, reach through the arm, and breathe. Maybe you can even find a stretch in the front of your right hip all the way up the right side of the torso through the armpit. On a long exhale, slowly sit back, and then take the hands behind you for the seated version of windshield wipers again. 
So feet a little wider than hip width, go side to side. You can let the heart follow the knees, makes it a little bit easier. If you want to work more in the hip joint, try to keep the heart lifted and fairly still. So we're isolating the movement more to the hip joint, if that's your goal to get into them. And then come back to the center. Good. Bring the legs out to the sides. And sit up as straight as you can. Hands to the heart. See how much you can straighten your legs while keeping the heart lifted. And then pull your heels in towards you a little bit to lift the heart even more. Now we'll take that right leg for a walk. Before you do that, engage your core and squeeze the buttocks. And then lift the right heel, bringing it gradually towards the center. And then out to the side again. One, two, three. Left side. One, two, three. And one, two, three. Again, right side. One, two, three, one, two, three. The last one on the left. One, two, three, one, two, three. Very good. Now, legs out to the sides. Think of drawing your thigh bones back into the hip sockets. Bend your knees, lean back about 45 degrees, engaging the core as the heart lifts and push your heels into the earth. If you like an extra challenge, you can hover the feet off the ground, maybe even catch your big toes. So it's a happy, happy baby variation. Try not to lean back against your couch like me. <laughs> this is cheating. Try to keep the heart uh, lifted, really engaging into the flexors of the hip. And then we'll bring the feet together, release the posture bound angle. So there is the option to take your hands behind you and lift the heart. This is a great place to stay, especially if you have any difficulty getting the knees towards the floor. If you are quite loose, you might hold on to the feet and take an inhale to lift and open the heart. Exhale, option to fold forward. Feel free to round your spine and breathe. And then inhale, slowly come up. Turn your feet towards the front of the mat. And we'll make our way onto our backs uh, for a pose called supported fish. So feel free to watch me before you do it. I'm gonna bend the knees with the heels just in front of the buttocks. And then around the back of the pant line here, I have my sacrum. So you have the curvy part of your lower back, that's the lumbar spine. And then further down is where you have your sacrum. You can take a yoga block and put it underneath the sacrum. Instead of going on the lowest height, try the next height up, supporting horizontally across the sacrum from one end of the waist to the other. And just hang out there. You can stay there with bent knees, roll your shoulders into the floor. You may find it really nice to gradually slide the feet out towards the front of the mat, straightening the legs, but then explore engaging the abdominals and engaging the buttocks momentarily. Try to create a lot of length and space in the low back. And the idea of this pose is there's two things going on. One of them is that the shoulders are naturally rolled back into the floor so the chest can open. The other is that we're lengthening the fronts of the hips. We'll take a few more breaths in this position. Maybe you can soften the effort even more while still feeling pretty comfortable here. And take some deep breath. Hands can touch the belly. So you can even feel if the sides of the belly and ribs are radiating out with your inhale, which is one aspect of diaphragmatic breathing. 
especially in these more back bendy shapes. And then bending both knees, bring the heels towards the yoga block. Both feet on the floor. And then pick up the right foot and draw the knee towards the right shoulder. Take one or both of your hands to the right leg. So you might be holding at the back of the thigh. Maybe you can hold around the knee. And then try pulling that knee in towards the right shoulder. And a little bit away from the midline off to the right. So there's a slight external rotation of the hip as we bring the leg out to the right. This is a great place to stay. Try rolling your right shoulder into the ground. From there, option to straighten the left leg, sliding the heel towards the front left corner of the mat. And breathe. And this is one of those poses where I can look at somebody and think they're not feeling anything and they're feeling a lot. <laughs> Or somebody might look like they're, um, like they're in a big stretch and they're not feeling anything. So you can really work with it internally. If you need to feel more of a stretch in the front of your hip, think about engaging the abdominal core and then pull on that right knee as much as you can. Shorten the right side of your spine and then reach long out through your left heel, lengthening the left side of the body. Once you can find that stretch in the front of the left hip, you might also add reaching the left arm behind you. And so we're trying to really lengthen the left psoas line from the front of the left hip. And then if we connect the shoulder blade to the back of the rib cage, reaching with that left arm and lifting the shoulder blade to the ear is going to create even more of a psoas stretch, softening and lengthening the lower back. Releasing tension in the front of the hips. And then switching sides. Bend both knees. Draw your left knee towards your left shoulder, or even further outside that shoulder, squeezing it deeply. And then slide the right foot towards the front of the mat reaching out through that right heel. Contract and shorten the left side of the spine and engaging with the core more on the left side. This is a great place to stay. There's also the option to slowly reach that right arm back again. Try to straighten the right leg, engaging the quad, and root the heel down. Oh, hello, my little buddy. I tell you, those animals, just they know when to get you. <laughs> oh. Almost at Shavasana Lenny. We're almost there, buddy. Well, a good rest today. Yeah. A few more slow breaths. Just imagine breathing up the whole right side as if it was a giant nostril from your right psoas all the way up the armpit. This is the complete opposite of sitting in a chair or riding a bike. And then bend both knees, place the feet on the floor, and then bring the legs parallel just imagine they were squeezing a yoga block or something. So we're activating the inner thighs. On an inhale, lift the hips up. Slide the block out of the way. And then hold the bridge pose for a few breaths. Feel free to slide the arms closer to each other behind the back. Squeezing between shoulder blades a little. Rolling the shoulder heads back into the floor. And then on a long exhale, slowly lower your spine down. Windshield wiper the legs side to side, spreading the arms with the feet as wide as the mat. Let the knees go side to side. <laughs> and try to listen to the sound of your breath. 
I'm listening to the sound of Pug's breath. It's very relaxing, let me tell you. And then we'll meet back in the middle. Stretch your feet out to the corners of the mat and relax your arms by your sides. And we'll move into final Shavasana relaxation, completely letting go of the body. Completely relax the jaw, relax the roof of the mouth, relax the face, and let go of all technique. Completely relax your belly, relax your core. Relax the floor of the core and the pelvis, the pelvic floor. And then let go of any control over the breath. Notice how the breath just takes care of itself automatically. Notice it slowly flowing in through the nostrils. As you move into deeper and deeper layers of relaxation, check in with the roof of your mouth and completely let it go. Here's a very simple way to do that. Take a long breath in. And then let out a big sigh of relief. Ah, completely releasing in the roof of the mouth.
You're welcome to continue resting in Shavasana. When you're, when you're ready to come out, take your time. No rush at all. Thank you so much for practicing with me and my buddy Lenny. Hope this served you well, everybody. Enjoy this beautiful day.